welcome to the studio again. We're going to film mono printing part two. And first of all, I want to thank you all for your subscriptions and I want to thank you for all your comments and your uh, wonderful remarks. We really appreciate that and all the likes too. Thank you so much. And today we're going to be filming mono printing on glass. So I'm going to show you some really cool things including dendritic printing and I hope you really like it. So now we're going to work on glass and you can do the exact same mono printing process on glass that you can on cardboard. The big difference between glass and cardboard is that the cardboard is going to give and after a while you're going to have this embossed uh, print on your cardboard that's going to show up in successive prints. You can't get that on glass. On glass when you when you mono print on glass it's going to be flat and hard and it's going to accept just the lines that you put down. Then when you put more paint on it those lines are going to be erased. So it's a completely, that, that's a very, very different process. But the cool thing about glass is that you can get really good dendritic prints. And I made a couple of, of those last night and I wanted to show you. They are not mono prints. They are dendritic. And what happens with a dendritic print is that you get a mirror image. So you get actually two prints for doing the same work. So I'm going to show you how that works. And it's pretty simple. And you're just going to put a little bit of paint down on your glass. And we're going to use a little bit of black and red together because I think that's really pretty. And then we're going to spread it a little bit. Well, let's use a brayer. And we're going to use our plexi. Now I'm using a sheet of plexiglass. I don't know if you can see it, but instead of another piece of glass, glass is really dangerous in the studio. You don't have to have glass. As I said, you can just use cardboard. If I had two sheets of plexiglass, that's what I would use. So we're going to compress this or smush it. Smush is an artistic term. It's a definite artistic term. And then we're going to lift it up. And so rather than use my fingernail, I'm going to use um, a palette knife. And I'm just going to push it under just slightly. And I'm going to lift it up. And as I'm lifting it, I hope you can see that the pattern is being formed. And now you have two prints that you can use. And dendritic, I don't remember if I told you that dendritic just means tree shaped. But let me lift these prints for you and then I'll show you the prints. And you have to go really lightly on the prints. Just very lightly touching them and then lift up. And you get this really cool print. Now, what are you going to do with these once you make them? Well, I use these in the studio for background pages. I like painting papers and using mono prints and resists as background for all of my work to cover a canvas and create that texture that I'm looking for. Now you can do all kinds of things with these so you can use them in lots of different ways. I'm taking my plexiglass plate and I'm just going to set it down. I just wanted to share one more thing with you. It creates these fabulous circles. You can also do squiggle marks. You can do all kinds of things with it. It's pretty fun. And then when you lift it up, well, let me use my palette knife. That'll be a little bit easier. It's going to create the dendritic circle that you're wanting. There you go. And I think I can get another just a, another print off of that. And I'm using black so it's easier for you to see in the studio. There. And then of course you have your mirror image on here. So how fun is that? Okay. 
Next thing I'm going to show you is stenciling. You can use, there are a lot of fabulous professional stencils that are very thin and really easy to use. But, it does, but what I wanted to share with you is that you can use whatever you have on hand. You don't have to have a professional stencil. And I'm using heavy bodied acrylic. And if it doesn't come out perfect the first time, just keep working it. The great thing is you can just clean off the glass so easily with a squirty bottle and a rag. And if it dries, you just simply use your razor blade and just take it right off the glass. So you just keep trying until you get a perfect print or lots of perfect prints. But anyway, they turn out pretty cool. We're going to try to pull one more print off of this. Now why would you do this? There we go. Love that one. That's pretty cool. Actually, I like both of them. And this one is really cool. Why would you do this? Well, the reason I do this is that when you just take your substrate and you, and you stencil directly to the page, then you've got one generation. When you pull a print of a stencil off of glass, now you've got the second generation. When you take that second generation and you put it into your artwork and you use some glazing medium and some acrylic paint and you cover that and then you highlight or shade, now you've got three, four generations in your art. And the reason that you want to do that is to show the layers. For me, my work is all about relationship and showing the layers. Relationships are complicated and the layers are what you want to see. You want to see where that relationship has progressed and those layers are what give your artwork depth and beauty. I hope you enjoyed the mono printing tutorial. I'm enjoying my chocolate now that we're finished filming. And next week we're going to be doing paper quilts in the studio. I'm going to show you how I created my paper quilts. They were on the in the winter edition 2014 of So Somerset on the cover and uh, article. And they were also featured in Artist Cafe. So I hope I'll see you next week. Until then, ciao for now.